welcome on behalf of the Magdalia TV team. Today we are being joined once again by Dan Blanchard. Dan is a speaker, a writer, an award-winning author, and an educator. He's going to be having a very interesting conversation with author Wayne English. But before starting with them, we want to remind you that Magdalia.com is an international non-profit organization and that you can collaborate with us by liking this video, leaving us a positive comment, subscribing to our channel, or sharing the content that we're going to be discussing here today with anybody that you think that may like it. We also want to invite you to participate. You can do that through the active chat. While we are live streaming, we have it open and you're more than welcome to leave us comments or your questions. Having said that, I have the pleasure of leaving you with Dan Blanchard and with Wayne English. Gentlemen, welcome to Mindalia live streaming. The screen is yours. Thank you, Miranan. So happy to be back with all of our great Mandalia TV fans from all over the world. They're the best uh, fans ever. So today, I can't wait to introduce my buddy, uh, Wayne English. I've known Wayne for a long time. I think the Mandalia fans are going to love him. Here's a guy, right, that can give people hope, all right? I mean, it's been said a long time ago that 85% of people out there want to write a book, but maybe 15% do if they get lucky. So Wayne's going to help uh, turn the tables on that one. All right, I've seen several of Wayne's webinars. He's a historical fiction writer. He's a great author. He's, uh, he's been published in The Futurist. How cool is that? Future-minded, right? Uh, he's a speaker, right? I've seen him over at the uh, Connecticut Authors and Publishers Association University, where he's uh, given uh, seminars over there. So he's done some really cool things. And Wayne's going to help us out today with our writing process among a whole bunch of other things. And he's gonna share some secrets that he knows that all the agents out there don't want all you guys knowing. So I'm really looking forward to what Wayne's gonna to say tonight. And I'm glad that my old buddy is able to spend some time with us tonight and, and enrich all of our lives. Wayne English, welcome to Medallia TV. Well, thank you, Dan, for that wonderful lead up. It was uh, so good that I'd like to listen to the lecture myself. <laughs> but, uh, before I get started, I want to thank you and Medallia TV for having me. I, I grac greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, so uh, Wayne, I know I just kind of scratched the surface with who you are. You want to spend some time introducing yourself to our Medallia TV fans? Oh, sure. Thank you. Uh, well, I'm, uh, as Dan said, I'm a writer and author and published four books. My fifth book, Historical Fiction, is out with uh, a bunch of agents right now. And all the notes from this show will be on my website. There's a link at the top of the site. If you go to wayneenglish.com, W-A-Y-N-E-A-E-N-G-L-I-S-H.com. What we talk about is there and, and a bunch of links are there. So you can use that page to run down a lot of the tools that we'll be talking about and cool. other stuff as well. Uh, but what I thought, rather, I don't want to talk about myself all night. That won't do anybody any good. I thought your, your, reader, your listeners and your viewers want to get published. So I thought that we could start talking about ways that they can get published, particularly for people who haven't published yet how to get a publishing list, and then you parlay that into magazine articles and blog posts, and then you parlay all of that maybe into a book deal. Or if you really wanna go for the book right away, we can talk about how to do that as well. But having a publishing history helps. I'm sorry? I missed. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm looking at Dan, I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so, so Wayne, let me jump in here uh, real quick. So is this how you got started? Uh, did you start small with some magazine articles or blogs or something like that? Did you do I like did. a crawl, walk, run? How did you start uh, to become an author? Long time ago, I was volunteering on a, an ambulance and I was also working in a nuclear engineering group and I wanted to share information on how to deal with a radiologically contaminated patient. So I sent an article off to uh, Emergency Magazine and, with photographs and uh, they published it. That was my first publication. 
and you, you begin that with a letter of query, actually. You don't just send this stuff off. And yeah. in the letter of query, you tell the editor what you want to do, why you're qualified to do it, that you're going to give him or her uh, photographs to go along with it. And you let them know that you've read the magazine and you understand what the magazine is all about and what the readers are all about. And that goes a long way to success. The editor will get back to you and say, send me, send me the article. And you do that. And, uh, you know, they'll wait a couple of weeks, a month. They know you've got to get time to uh, write the thing and get the photographs done. Yeah. And then if they like it, they publish it. And then you've got your first publishing credit. Oh, and that's the important awesome. Thing, oh, yeah, well, thank you. Uh, yeah. But for your, for as being the author, what's important is the about the author section that goes at the very end of the article. That's where you've got maybe four or five or a half a dozen sentences to tell the world about yourself. You want to talk about you, mention your website, so that when people read it, you're actually advertising yourself as well. Yeah. And so if I could and, jump, can I jump in, Wayne? I, I, I like how you um, I like how you reached out to the magazine and, and this particular strategy that you used on how you told the uh, magazine that I read your magazine, I'm familiar with you guys, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they don't get the feeling that you maybe you mass emailed like 200 magazines. Oh, you no, kind of no. show that you know about them. And I think no. that improves your chances, don't you? Yeah, very much so, Dan. You really want to have the editor know that you are reaching out specifically to them with a very specific article and you want to list your professional credentials to write that article. And then as you go along, that will you may not need to do that. In fact, once you start to get published, editors will contact you and say, can you write an article on, and they'll give you the subject. And if you feel you want to do that or you want to research that and do that, then you, you, pick, you, you pick up the job. You tell them, yes, you'll do it. And you give them an idea of when you're going to have that article to them so they know that they can expect it in three weeks or a month or six weeks. And that's important because editors have an editorial schedule that they've got to meet. They're scheduling work out maybe three or four or five months in the future. So when they know your article is going to show up, that will find its way into their publication schedule. And then when the work actually gets there, it gets in line. And when the mission, when the magazine gets put together, your work is a part of it. And okay. Being a writer means you once you say you're going to do something, you need to get them to work. If you don't, yeah. that really makes a problem for the editor because that chunk of the magazine has got to be filled with something else. So you got to be reliable. Now, what about the people that don't want to go through the magazine route? Are there other routes to like becoming published and maybe someday writing a book? Yeah, there are. Uh, if you don't want to do a magazine, you can approach someone who publishes a blog and you basically go through the same thing. You ask if you can be a guest blogger. Mm -hmm. And cool. if that works out, then that's how you get started. Uh, there may be small local magazines in your area. There was a small magazine here. And I published uh, an article with them. It was how to deal yep. with the death of a pet. So I did some research. I called some grief counselors, put together an article, sent it to them. They accepted it and published it. So yeah. there's ways to get around this. If you yep. feel you're getting rejected, well, don't let that stop you. The important thing is to bring the right product to the right magazine, to the right blog. Yep. And that means everything. So if you get what about some I, I know I, newspapers are kind of dying, but is that another avenue? Yeah, very much so, Dan. Uh, in fact, once you publish once or twice with a newspaper, the newspaper editors will get a hold of you. They're filling space every week or every month. They need content on an ongoing basis. In fact, a local paper did just that. They contacted me and I did, uh, I think, four or five articles for them. And yeah. they paid uh, for that. Oh, uh, I was just going to ask you. That was my next question. You probably read my mind. 
was are these something that we should expect payment for or are some yes. of them going to be pro bono like yes uh some of each it depends now uh, uh newspapers are going to pay you a blog it might be pro bono it depends on how big the blog is how much money the blog is turning over and how badly they want your work now i i contacted a very a large going concern and they didn't want to pay me so i didn't send them the work because yep. i writing for free hurts other writers because if they publish me for nothing they're not going to go out and look for somebody who wants to get published and i know when you get started you have to do a lot of things and, and publish for nothing yep. is one of the things you have to do but yep. as you start to get doing more and more of this uh, you're going to you're going to migrate into a position where you're going to want to get paid for your work because it's going to become more and more of a job and less and less of a hawk and your time is important okay. Yeah, that makes it, sense. It takes a lot of time to do the research and write the query letters and to get the work yeah. line and to do the work. And you want to be compensated for that. And it just makes you feel good to get paid for writing. Yeah. So you're building your resume. You're building your confidence. You're building your resume. You're building your network, your contacts. Right. Hopefully you're making a few bucks to kind of get you That's through right. some of this stuff. That's and then right. how do you pull the gun for the big like book? Like how, how do you coach people through that? Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you how I published my first book. And when I tell you, you're gonna laugh. I, I had the book already written and I was gonna self publish it. I was gonna go with what's called a vanity press. You pay them, they publish the book. I had a book on my desk that was sort of similar. It was a business book. So I looked at who published it and on a, on a lark, I went online. Uh, sent an email to the publisher and I said, I've written this book and I'm interested in having you publish it. I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste my time. If you think you're interested, yep. like, no. So he emails me back and he says, we're interested. Send me a book proposal. Well, I mean, yep. the book proposal took me two weeks to write. It was like 115 pages long. Sent off the book proposal. They liked the book proposal. They sent me a contract. I signed the contract, sent him the contract, followed it up with the book, sent him uh, a hard copy of the book. It was uh, printed out on computer paper, sent it off, and also sent it an email. Uh, they hired an editor. The book was edited. Uh, they sent me some money, sent me uh, you know a good chunk of money, about three thousand bucks. Wow. And the book was yeah. The book was uh, published worldwide. Yeah. The book did okay. It didn't do as well as I would like, but it did okay. Yep. Yeah. Now that was pretty cool. And I thought I thought I heard you say that it was a vanity uh, press. Oh no, I'm sorry. I, I I apologize. I misled you. I was going to use a vanity press and decided uh, against it. And okay. So I I went with yeah. the the All actual. Right. It was career press. Now that makes that makes sense started. to me. That makes sense to me, Wayne. Because usually vanity presses don't work out that way. And I know you yeah. said something like they expect you to pay them. Some people right. go that route. Yeah. Uh, I don't really encourage people to go that route. Neither um, do I. Yeah, because it's just not usually a good experience from uh, what I've heard and experienced myself. So what is the secret, Wayne, that the agents don't want uh, aspiring writers to know? Well, they don't want you really self-publishing they want your proposal to come to them and they really don't want you approaching a publisher directly because if you approach a publisher directly like i did there was no agent involved so uh -huh. i didn't i didn't have to pay an agent fee i didn't have to pay an agent anything really yeah and and some agents they want you to pay copying fees and then they take a percentage of whatever you make or percentage of whatever the book makes later on and if you can avoid an agent you put all that money in your pocket wow so, and, and agents want you to they want you to think it's hard getting published and they'll tell you that and you know in a certain if it depends on how you look at it in a certain way it is because a lot of the big publishers won't deal with authors directly they want you to send it to an agent because the agent 
is basically a screen. Yep. Stuff that's that they know the uh, publisher's not going to want, they won't bring to that publisher. They'll bring it somewhere else. Or they uh -huh. will help the author with writing and editing and improving the book before it finds its way to a publisher. So I'm not trying to badmouth agents, not at all. I'm, I'm hoping to work with an agent on my next book. But the agents yeah. definitely have their place in the publishing cycle if you're going to go with a traditional publisher. Yeah. So, so now, for the people out there, Wayne, that are feeling like overwhelmed, you know, you're talking about um, agents, publishers, query letters, proposals, 115 pages. I mean, I imagine some people out there are overwhelmed. And then you go and say that it's not really that hard to get published. What kind of advice can you give to people that give them hope that it's not that hard to get published? Well, what I would say is, first of all, write your book so that you've got something to publish. Uh, another way to go about this, if you're doing nonfiction now, let's talk nonfiction for a minute, is to write the book proposal. And then you send the book proposal out. And if people like the proposal, then you write the book. So that saves you writing the book in its entirety. If you're yeah. going to, now let's change gears back to fiction. Um, fiction is done a little differently. If people, when you send a pro fiction proposal, they may want to see anywhere between five pages and five chapters of this, depends on who you're sending it to. So you can write your fiction proposal and you can shop the proposal without having to write the entire book. If people want it, whether it's fiction or not, then you write the book. So it saves you from writing a book, a book length manuscript that yep. you can't sell. And, and that, that works out a lot better. Yeah, and that makes meantime, a lot of sense. And, a lot, and you save a lot of expense and a lot of time. And in the meantime, the beginning writer can be doing blog posts, can be doing articles, you can be getting published. You might want to publish some short stories. Or you can self-publish a book of short stories. If you go to Amazon, you can publish on Amazon, and it's yeah, yep, free of charge. It's yeah, very, well, I'm glad very... you brought that up, Wayne, because that's where I was going next. You know, what about the authors that are just like it's it's overwhelming? What about self-publishing? How does that work? I've done that. My last three books have been self-published. You write the manuscript, you upload it to Amazon. They've even got a cover creator. So you can cover, you can create the cover of your book right on Amazon. Now that solves a lot of problems for a beginning author. Yeah, it sure does. That's pretty then, cool. Yeah, it is. And it, it works out very well. Um, all of the help is online for you. You can telephone them and get help. There's incredible tutorials that are out there. You created an account at Amazon, a KDB Kindle account, and you're off and running. And that is not difficult to do at all. It really isn't. And it's a good way for a beginning author to get started. And then yep. if your book does real well, you can bring that and you can say, look, I sold 5,000 copies online. And a, and a publisher just may pick you up and publish the book. It's a hard copy. You don't need to feel that because you've published it, that you can't use that book again with a traditional publisher. That's not the case. So you can make the leap. So now I've heard in the past, some people say that they're just not good at getting the words down on paper. You know what I'm saying? And I know that mm -hmm. sometimes it might be better to like dictate a book. Have you ever had any experience with anything like that, dictating books? Yeah, there's there's a product. Can I say a product name? Is that okay? Uh, yes. <laughs> Dragon Naturally Speaking. You can yeah. literally talk to your computer and it will turn your speech into text. That's one way to do it. But people who say that, they are good at it, but they've never done it. And they only think they can't write because they haven't written. If you can dictate it, you can write it. That, that's, I think that's a fallacy. 
And, yeah. and people should people should really start doing some writing and start getting some publications. And, and that feeling of I can't write will go away. Uh, people well, I love write. how you I love how you give people hope because I know I run across people too all the time that say, you know, I, I, I just can't write. I'm not a good writer. And I've always said, it doesn't matter. You just start putting something down on paper or what you said, if you could dictate it, you know, maybe you dictate it, but you, if you could dictate it, you could also write it. But let's just say, regardless, whether they dictate it, they write it, whatever, but you put something down on paper and That's it doesn't correct. even have to be good. That's In the right. beginning there, you got plenty of time to fix it. Isn't that correct, Wayne? Right. That's correct. And, and that's what editors are for. You're going to have to hire an editor. A good editor won't work for nothing. But you bring your manuscript to an editor or, or you join a writer's group. I'm a member of two writer's groups, Dan. I think you probably know about both of them. And one oh, yeah. is a group where we, we bring our work and we critique each other's work. And if you can't find a writer's group, start one. Go to your local library. Go to a bookstore. These people will give you a place to meet and you get together with some other beginning writers and you critique each other's work. And it's wonderful. You get feedback and you, your work gets better and better and better. And it, I and love that you're, I, I, Wayne, I love that you're including that, you know, the writer's group and start one. It just so helps to be around like-minded people. You know, yes, they give oh you encouragement. God. They make your work better. They set yep. your expectations higher. Yep. And, you know, as you know, I see you out in the circuit. We bump into each other in different writers groups. But um, you also know that, you know, back years ago, I started a writers group because That's I was true. having trouble getting to the local one. So I right. started my own on a different night and yep. it worked out good. And I of always course. said, hey, if I could do that, anybody could do it. You know what I'm well. saying? Wait, so these are some great tips you're giving people. And um, I, like I said, I love the hope that you're providing. And I know we get to close up in a few minutes, Wayne, but I'd like to say, um, do you have any last bits of wisdom, any last bits of hope that could get that 15% boosted up? You know, 85% of people want to write books, but only maybe 15% of the people oh. out there are doing it. So how do we give, oh. how do we boost up those numbers and give more people hope? I can, I can give you a process that works. Uh, when, you, when a lot of people sit down to write, they sit down and start writing. That's not what you want to do. Sit down and think about the book you want to write and do the research so you know the subject or you probably already know it. Now make an outline and say, just, just put down everything you want to put in the book. Don't worry about structuring it. Now go back and structure the outline into chapters and just put bullet points down what goes in every chapter and do the whole book from beginning to end. Now you know the chapters and you know what goes in the chapters. Then yeah. start writing and then start with the first chapter and write it all out and don't be concerned. Don't let yourself say, this is no good. I'm going to quit. That's a big mistake. Keep yeah. going and get your chapters written. You're going to end up with a finished book. If you write an hour a day, you can finish a book in four or five months. Believe me, you can yeah. do that. Now I, you've I, got a finished manuscript. Now you got something to take to an editor or take to your writer's group. Nice, and, nice. And that works. I, I love that how works. you break it down, Wayne, into manageable chunks, and then you look for help. You don't have to go this route alone. There's writer's groups out there. There's professional help, editors out there. They know this, there's help. There's people like me yeah. and you out there. Yeah. So Don't lose heart. That's yeah. the thing. So I know Mirna's getting ready to come back on. Uh, and um, Mirna, are you still there? I'm right here. <laughs> cool. Before we leave, uh, I want to ask Mr. Wayne, where can our audience find you? You can reach me at W-A-Y-N-E-A-E-N-G-L-I-S-H dot com. Wayne A. English dot com. How about and there's a boatload of help there for new writers. There's a blog and there's a book proposal you can download. There's, there's a lot there. Go there, use it. There's no charge. Just it's there. If it helps you, great. Thank you. How about cool. Mr. Blanchard? Where can our audience find you? Uh, of course, Mirna. So uh, 
danblanchard.net, grand96.com, pretty much all the social media channels, you name it, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, all of them, YouTube, check me out at Amazon, and of course, Mindalia TV, hey! Well, thank you again. That's this important information. Uh, we truly appreciate the fact that you allowed the Mindalia TV cameras to be a channel for your ideas. Before we leave, we just want to say and remind that Mindalia.com is an international nonprofit organization and that you can collaborate with us just by liking, subscribing or sharing this content with someone that you know that can benefit of what has been discussed here today. We have nothing else to say by now, but thank you again and until next time. Bye bye.